Oh, many thanks for staying with us on the program. We're still talking about the situation in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. Well, of course, we all know that that's where Nigeria gets its main sphere of the economy from oil. Well, we're looking at diversification, but for now, oil still remains what will fuel this nation. But a lot of things have happened here. You've heard my first guest on the program on what has happened in that region in terms of the figures and the facts coming there. Where the president, Muhammadu Buhari, was in Kenya. And when he spoke to a journalist on the issues of the Niger Delta, look at some of the things uh, he said in this quote. Well, he said that, uh, and I quote him now, we are talking to some of their leaders. We will deal with them as we dealt with Boko Haram if they refuse to talk to us as a government. We know our responsibility, which is to secure the environment. It is clear to us that lenders won't uh, fund projects in an in, insecure environment. We realize that we have to secure the country before we can efficiently manage it. Let's find out how uh, some of uh, the issues on what the militants want and the real reasons behind the agitations that we have seen that have been renewed in the Niger Delta region. Mr. Tony Ranta, a Niger Delta elder, joins me on the program now. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tony Ranta, for joining us on the program. Uh, Thank if you. you. A lot of people will be asking a renewed agitation. What could be the center of the agitations that's just coming up again and again in the region? Well, um, you realize during the Rio Olympics, a young woman sees the headlines during a 400 meters race. She threw herself across the line, uh, Shauna, Bahamas Shauna Villa, and thereby she won the race. That is, she used an unorthodox method to draw attention to herself in a sense that she got her objective, which was to win the race. What these armed agitators are doing is employing what they know best to draw attention to themselves. But they're not saying anything new. They are repeating what we've always been saying. And what we have been always saying is that this nation is wrongly structured and there's a need to restructure it. But then, that having, having been said, we get down to the immediate issues. Now, the Niger Delta region, we do know from 2005 especially to 2009, was a, uh, embroiled in this kind of imbroglio. And President Yaradua came up with a template that was very effective. Um, uh, we must admit that President Goodluck Jonathan did not fully consolidate on those gains that were made by President Yaradua. And so we are now at the sorry pass we found ourselves, where issues concerning environmental remediation are not being taken seriously, where issues concerning gas flaring are not being taken seriously. We are issues concerning capacity building, uh, human development, and infrastructural development, and community uh, participation in oil revenues ownership have not been fully taken care of since the demise of President Yaradua. It was therefore inevitable that we'll get to this pass. Mm. Uh, because one would be wondering, uh, because uh, issues of, uh, we've seen agencies come up from that. There is the Ministry of the Niger Delta, there is the NDDC, there is a lot of agencies that have been brought forward to cater for the Niger Delta region, which has six states, uh, the South South has six states with all of the oil producing states, uh, about nine states in, in that region. But a lot, one will be wondering, uh, some people will ask the questions. All these funds that go into that, have they not catered for some of the things that you have outlined? Um, the Minister of Petroleum came on the air recently when he was receiving certain traditional rulers to say that over 40 billion naira had been invested in the Niger Delta region in the last 10 years, and there's very little to show for it. But then that is not to be unexpected. Nigeria, 
we all have agreed has a problem of having endemic corruption. So that, we I should mean, not that, expect that corruption, Niger Delta that, 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 to be any different. That corruption is has cost the problem, isn't it, in the Niger Delta? It's part of the cost. Because if 40 billion or more has been spent and there's nothing to show for it, we have seen such a large scale of uh, environment degradation poverty level at some of the uh, the most mind-boggling rates and one would be wondering who are to blame or who is to blame for all of yes uh, the same way one wonders uh, at uh, the reality that over 400 billion naira has been sunk into the rest of nigeria and we still are seeing mind-boggling rates of poverty no, but one, mind -boggling I mean, does rates that of answer the question stronger. of uh, the situation and the leadership in the niger delta region it is simple. We are being led by politicians. Forget mm. about the. No, no, because that. a lot of people have. Uh, they're right. That is a school of thought that the Niger Delta has shot itself in the foot. In terms of. Nigeria has shot itself in the foot. So you do not agree Every that leadership is a major problem in the Niger Delta? It is a major problem of Nigeria. For example, uh, you, are, you have just quoted the president speaking in Kenya, and he's talking about. If they do not accept to dialogue, whereas, well before he left for Kenya, the armed agitators have offered to dialogue, have given terms to, uh, for peace to come about, have told us exactly whom the government should dialogue with, uh, and the Dutch government has not yet even publicly acknowledged. No, but the president, we, there was, uh, I mean, a sound bite of what the president said, that look, uh, they should calm down, we're going to talk to them and all of that, because the latest was document... That, was that after the NDA put out... No, there were, you know that there's been series of uh, offers you know, from people saying, let the government dialogue, but the NDA said, no, we're not dialoguing. At some point, they said they wanted to dialogue. But the latest information on the NDA's website has said that they will dialogue, but they need to choose for themselves those who will be at the front of the dialogue uh, uh, program. Yes, but they, they, have, they have named them. They said the pa, uh, Chief Edwin Clark led Niger Del pan Niger Delta stakeholders. That group should lead their negotiations. In fact, let me make one point clear here. They have also said that they have not appointed Professor Wole Shoinka to the to dialogue on their behalf. That is not to say that they have not benefited from P Professor Wole Shoinka's intervening. It is that two different things to intervene. There's been a lot of intervention. In fact, that has created one um, problem. There's a proliferation of so-called committees and contact groups uh, built out of uh, many members of uh, the president's uh, cabinet and other political uh, friends trying to create relevance for themselves and now saying, we have the solution. We have the solution. Whereas the only very credible force or so, uh, channel that we have seen established so far has been the channels the channels that have been accepted by the NDA. But, 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 but the NDA, because there's a confusion here, I mean, f from the perspective of many Nigerians, uh, we've heard Chief Clark say, who are the Niger Delta Avengers? That, was, that, 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 that was over four months ago. So, Chief Clark knows no, the, the he, Niger Delta Avengers now? No, 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 no. Do, does he know them now? I will not speak for No, no, because Clark. You, I cannot you speak are in for that, Chief uh, Clark. You are in that group? Yes, I am. Yeah, of course. If you were dialogue with four, some, a group of people, you need to know them. I, I it wouldn't be dialoguing for a faceless group. Really. I, will, I will say that we are in touch with the different armed agitators in the region. There is also a proliferation of these groups. No, no, no. There is, there is one major group, the Niger Delta Avengers, and then there are smaller groups mm. which have recently even agreed to become, to subsume themselves to the Niger Delta Avengers. Mm. Now, the point here is we must be aware of the fact that, that, uh, a lot of people, it is in their interest to even continue creating confusion by carrying out false flag or 
uh, facilitating false flag operations that will make this whole thing seem to be as if it cannot be resolved and it has is not coming to an end therefore you find that we we have had allegations from the people in the creeks themselves that some politicians are funding them to carry out seeming opposition Mr. Ranta, or to there are, there are links there are links to the Niger Delta Avengers I'm very sure that you you probably have heard some people link some past leaders and some leaders in the Niger you've heard about that I was supposed I'm, I'm on that list yeah, you are linked to them. No, no, that uh, that allegation was made that I'm that a, sympa a sympathizer. Yeah, are you sympathetic the, to the group? I am sympathetic to everything that concerns the Niger Delta region. Even the, I even the not, militants. I am not. Are militants. I have never been sympathetic to violence, but I will not deny the fact that for us to begin a process of healing, we have to accept that these young people that are armed exist and we have to acknowledge their grievances and interestingly most of their grievances key into the general grievances of the region because uh, if you look at some of the demands it's uh, some of it are uh, some somewhat confusing for example asking for release of uh, some people who are behind bars asking for corruption charges to be, who, to be taken who, who made those demands? Well, they're, they're all over the place. No, 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 no. That's the point. You have to be able to separate the demands by the Niger Delta Avengers or any armed agitators from demands by politicians. If you look the at the first set, just a minute, the first set of demands uh, that came regarding corruption and so on were demands that were made by governors. And those were political demands. We, nobody has asked anybody to uh, drop corruption charges. We fully support the anti-corruption war of the president. Even the NDA d does too. Every Niger Delta, like every good Nigerian, supports a holistic war against corruption. What we are against is a selective war. A war that seems to be targeted, like one of the sound bites you put there. We do not want anybody to have the impression that there's a 97% and there's a 5%. We want Nigerians to feel like Nigerians and not to start feeling like they are being separated along the lines of how they voted in 2015. People voted in 2015 according to their consciences. Mm. Because, but the we, moment the president came into power, it became in our enlightened self-interest for all of us to rally around him. And we have been doing so, and we expect him to reciprocate in every way. By not, for example, you have just mentioned how, how the, the budget is skewed against the Niger Delta and the South East. Now, that is not going to be help, helpful. That's not going to help us. If we want people to believe and act as Nigerians, then you have to treat them with equity and with justice, and according to the rule of law. All right, uh, Mr. Tony Ranta. Well, well, we'll take another time out, and when we come back, we will be hearing from the federal government on their effort on this matter carrot or stick which way is best in this matter join us again